Hey everyone, Parallel here. Welcome to Star Trek Online. The summer event for 2017 has arrived. It is time to once again return to Orisa and enjoy the festivities. Looks like there are lots of new cosmetics and swimsuits. There's the new Caracal pets and uh, some new kit modules this year as well. So I will be checking those all out in a future video, but in this video I want to focus on the big prize. That is the, of course, the summer event ship. This year we are getting the tier six Vorgon Rincodon carrier. So I wanna check this ship out and see the stats. They did release the stats on a recent blog, so I will pull those up and go through them. But uh, first I just wanna do a quick intro to the event for anyone who is unfamiliar with Risa. Um, you can actually see the event ship right there behind my character. Uh, pretty nice looking ship actually it uh, looks very long so and it's going to be a very large carrier so pretty cool uh, looking forward to getting that um, so yeah so quick intro here for anyone who is not familiar oh yeah and i just wanted to mention uh this is of course on the pc for the console players you are getting actually the vorgon xiphius heavy escort also a tier six ship um PC players got that last year, and it is actually a fantastic ship, so I would highly recommend if you are on the uh, console uh, to get your hands on that and participate in the event. Um, and in fact, I also wanted to mention one other thing, because I also heard consoles uh, just recently got Season 13 released, and as part of that, there's a limited time period where you will be able to log in and claim the Ferengi Nandi warship, which is another Tier 6 warship, which is actually the event ship from the summer event from two years ago. So that was from the 2015 summer event. And that is a fantastic ship. The Frankie Nandy is an amazing ship. Uh, so you definitely want to log in and get your hands on that. I believe you can, I believe you can get it in the uh, C stores. If you just pull up the C store, um, go to the promotions tab, most likely it should be in there. Uh, that should be where you claim it. I can't do it here from the PC side, but I just wanted to let console players know that you definitely want to log in and get that Ferengi Nandi. It is an amazing ship, um, and well worth your, you know, well worth it. Uh, especially for a new player, getting your hands on a tier six ship that that, that is that powerful is really amazing. Um, I flew that ship for a long time. It was it was really fantastic. It's it's actually very unique. The Ferengi Nandi is the only ship in the game with six bridge officer seats, which is uh, quite interesting because it's nice to that extra uh, bridge officer seat because it gives you another uh, passive ability from if you slot in another bridge officer there, you can use their traits as well. So very, very nice. Uh, definitely get your hands on that ship if possible. Um, but yeah, so back to the PC and this year's event. Now, let's see. So quick intro here for people who are unfamiliar to Risa. Now, when you first arrive here, I believe you have to be uh, level 11 or higher um, so you don't have to be very high level you I mean you get a level 11 just going through the tutorial missions um, when you first arrive here well how do you get here so you can get here very easily if you pull up your missions tab and uh, you will see the event right here um, click on it and you can transwarp immediately to Risa uh, that's actually this is for the whole duration of the event you can click this for a free uh, transwarp to Risa with no cooldown. So it's actually quite handy. Uh, so that's the easiest way to do it. Or you can just actually fly here from the star chart. Um, it is a little bit, a uh, little bit south from um, Earth space dock. So just fly down a couple sectors and you will be there. So once you arrive, if this is your first time on Risa, there will be just a quick quest you talk to uh, that will uh, just kind of intro you to the actual quest NPC, which is right here. You complete that quest really quickly and it will actually bring up and unlock the summer event store. So you'll want to do that quest uh, right when you arrive. I can't show it here because uh, you only have to complete that quest once per character uh, forever. So even in the future events, you'll never have to do that little quest again. But um, once you complete that, you'll be able to come here and talk to this NPC, the event coordinator. And this is where you actually get the quest to earn the big prize, which is right there. So to get the tier six ship, what you have to do is complete this quest here, Flying High. Um, 
you have to complete this quest, I believe, let me just double check, yeah, so uh, you have to complete this quest once per day, and each time you complete it once per day, you can pick up 40 of the prize vouchers. Uh, you need a total of 1,000 prize vouchers, so that means you'll have to complete this quest for 25 days, or you know, once a day for 25 days, and then you will have your ship. Um, the quest is actually very easy. Um, it's actually kind of fun. You just kind of uh, go around on your floater and complete a few uh, courses. Very, very easy to do and pretty quick and just, you know, spend the, that small amount of time per day and you'll have yourself, a, you know, a free tier six ship after 25 days. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the quest here. Now it is... Um, Yeah, so once you activate the quest, it is actually timed, uh, but it's also it's plenty of time. Don't worry about that too much. But uh, the first thing you need to do is to pick up a floater, which is basically your little jetpack. So in Arisa, you can use the jetpacks. You can come right over to this guy, and uh, you can actually get a floater here, a rental floater for a 1,000 energy credits. You can do that to start off, but I would highly, highly recommend that you... Uh, save up and buy one of the high quality floaters. They handle much better and they are much faster. They will make it so it is uh, much easier to complete both the daily quest and a lot of the uh, little mini games you can do as well in Risa. To get one of these floaters, you're gonna need to earn Lalnut favors. And the Lalnut favors you get by participating in the mini games. Um, you can just go up here to the upper right and you'll see your little summer event mini games list that pops up and uh yeah so just uh whenever you see one of these games coming up uh participate it and you will get lol nuts as a reward i'll probably take a look at all the new cosmetics the new uh there's even a new event this year the biathlon i'll take a look at all that good stuff in a future video but uh yeah this video is just focusing on just what you need to do to get the ship and that is this flying high quest So as soon as you activate your floater, um, you do have to equip it. So you'll uh, slot it into your uh, character devices and uh, you will have it there. As soon as you activate the floater, the timer will start. You get 10 minutes to complete uh, three courses. You can actually pull up your area map and you'll see where they are. So you see I got one course here. Oh man, mine are all scattered around. Usually there's a couple right in this area. We've got one over here, one here, uh, one here, and one here. So I think I'll just start with this close one and then head up here and do these two. You only need to do three out of the four, so it's kind of up to your choice how you want to do it. Um, but there really should not be a problem uh, completing it by the uh, within the 10 minute time limit. It's really, really easy. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you haven't been up here, you can get an accolade by coming on top of this building right here with your floater. So here we go. Here is the first course. And it's pretty straightforward. You just have to fly through the hoops. No big deal. And you can do it much faster in one of the higher quality floaters. Much better control. Much better turning. And much better speed. So really, really easy. Yep, you just do that you do that 25 times, you know, once a day for 25 days, and you got yourself a tier 6 ship. It's really, really good for, I'd highly recommend that all new players, or even veterans, honestly, I mean, you can't say no to a tier 6 ship for this little of effort. Uh, to actually try to get a tier 6 ship farming a Dilithium, or, you know, at purchasing one with Zen, would take a lot more resources to do, so... This is definitely the way it would go. Always pick up these free ships when they're available. Um, what's even nicer now is that all of these events, uh, well, not all of them, but the summer and winter events, the ones that give you the ships, are all now uh, account-wide unlocks. So that makes them even more worth it, is you can do... Uh, you just do it once on one character, and that will unlock that ship for all other characters on your account in perpetuity. So it's like, even in the future, if you create a new alt, they will also have access to the ship. So it's it's really, really good because you can just reclaim it from your uh, event tab. You can uh, reclaim it from the event store. 
So even your future characters will be able to get their hands on the uh, ship here with you through the account reclaim. So very, very nice. On top of all that, these ships also get a, you know, they come with an Admiralty card. So that's also an Admiralty card, again, for all of your uh, characters. So, I mean, even if you don't like the ship, you know, if you're a veteran character and you don't think you're actually going to fly the ship, just uh, just get it anyway, just for the um, for a Tier 6 Admiralty card. And an Admiralty card for all of your alts. I mean, there's just, you know, there's no downside to doing it. I always see, you know, some people always say, you know, the ship, if they're not impressed by the ship or don't think they're going to fly it. Ooh, there's another view of the ship way over there. Sometimes people don't think they're going to use the ship and they say it's, you know, it's a waste of time, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, they don't think it's worth it, but really just, I would just highly, highly recommend that you spend the time to do this because the free Admiralty card, the free ship, maybe the trait will be decent. I haven't actually looked at the trait on this one yet, but there's just so many reasons to get a free tier six ship and it's, there's so little downside. It just, you know, that didn't even take me, you know, four minutes to do the, to do the quest. So, um, it's really easy to do. You just... You know, it's, it's frankly, it's kind of relaxing. I mean, you just kind of do, uh, fly around on your floater, do a couple of really easy races, and uh, and you're done. I mean, it's, you know, pretty easy to do. So I'd say, you know, even if you don't think you're going to use the ship, it's still worth uh, worth doing. All right, so let's go ahead and talk to the event coordinator. Let's go ahead and turn it in. And there we go. We got 40 uh, Long Not Prize vouchers. So we're on our way to getting the ship. 24 more days. Now, so that's the ship. I'm going to fly around a little bit and see if we can get a better look at it here. And what I'm going to do now is pull up the stats and give this thing a, a you know a good review. Take a look at what the stats are. And uh, since this is a carrier, it's going to be coming with some uh, pets, hangar pets. So we'll take a look at what the stats are on those. And uh, yeah, I'll give you my thoughts. But does it, man, that looks really nice, doesn't it? That's a pretty solid looking ship there, so... That looks really nice. I always find it funny that the the Vorgon ships remind me. I think they look very, very similar to the Vorlon ships from Babylon 5. They have that whole uh, kind of that living ship uh, kind of hull texture on them. So I just think that's funny because the Vorgon's you know, name is so similar to Vorlon's in Babylon 5. But uh, yeah, for whatever reason, they look very, very similar. And in fact, the, the previous year, the Vorgon Xiphius Heavy Escort... I think is a dead ringer for the White Star from, uh, you know, from Babylon 5, so, which is also a really great looking ship. So these, these Vorgon ships do look actually quite nice. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and pull up the uh, stats here. I'll pull them up on the side and kind of go through it and give you my thoughts. Let's see, let's pull up the, there we go. There, so there it is, the Vorgon Rincodon Carrier Tier 6. So, yep, it is uh, Tier 6, and uh, every faction can use it. And, um, yep, so let's see here. Let's take a look at all of the stats. So first thing, Hull Strength. Hull Strength is 65,000 at level 60. Guys, that is a new record. This is now the highest hull strength ship in the entire game. You could, pr I think this, that even, I'm pretty sure that even breeds out the advanced obelisk. So that is, this is now the strongest hull vessel in the game. You could probably turn this into a pretty massive tank if you wanted to. Uh, it even has kind of an engineering focus, as you'll see in the uh, console slots and the uh, bridge officer seats. Shield modifier, 1.05. That's, I mean, slightly, that's, you know, about average for a cruiser, maybe slightly above average. Um, but that hull strength, holy crap, that's that's an amazing hull strength. It's got a 3-3 weapon layout. I have to admit, I'm a little bit disappointed by that. I was kind of hoping this would be actually a dreadnought carrier, so it would have a 4-3 layout. Um, it's a little bit unfortunate. Um, I know it's only a free ship, and the carriers are nice. Particularly now in season 13 with all the hangar pet buffs, uh, carriers are actually, you know, indirectly helped by that. So the new uh, pet AI and the improved damage output from the pets will actually be quite nice on this ship. But yeah, still would have been nice to have a 4-3. I mean, I know in previous events they do give out warships. I mean, the Nandy warship, the, the um, 
what was the other one? The Chelbolg warship from the uh, Breen, from the winter event. That was also an incredibly powerful ship. So, and I kind of consider that, you know, uh, dreadnought carriers on the level of warships because, you know, warships also have the 8-8 eight, eight, um, weapons layout, whereas, like, most escorts only have, or not 8-8, eight, eight, 4-4 four, four, uh, four, four instead of the 4-3 like most other escorts. So they have 8 weapon slots instead of 7. But, uh, alas, in this case, it is just a standard carrier, not a dreadnought carrier. Um, as far as bridge officer seating, it's got a lieutenant commander tactical. That's good. It's got an ensign engineering, eh. commander engineering. So it is a, definitely an engineering focused ship. Uh, lieutenant commander science. So it does have at least a, a, uh, access to a lieutenant commander science ability. And then a lieutenant universal temporal. So that's going to be a little bit of a problem where the only, yeah, the... <laughs> The universal is again the only seat that gets the uh, uh, specialization. So if you want to use any temporal abilities, you're going to have to use use your universal seat for that. That's also kind of unfortunate. So a little bit limited on the the bridge officer seating. Um, would have been really nice to have that ensign engineering have been like an ensign universal. I think that would help a lot more. It actually give you more flexibility without having to use the you know those temporal operative seats on the lieutenant universal. With that few tactical seats, you're almost going to have to use that Lieutenant Universal as a tactical. Um, so it's a pretty pretty uh, limited bridge officer seating. Um, but with all that engineering focus, again, if you want to turn it into a tank, you sure, certainly can. Um, and the consoles as well uh, seem to focus on engineering. So you got three tactical, five engineering, three science. So pretty decent console uh, slot layout, not, no complaints there. Um, it's got a 6.5 degree per second turn rate, so it's going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to be a slow turning ship. This is going to be a tub, so yeah, you're not going to be maneuvering around very fast. That's very standard for carriers, though. Pretty standard turn rate, low impulse modifier, low inertia. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna handle like a, uh, <laughs> it's gonna handle like a rock. This thing is just not going to be maneuverable at all. Um, it does come with a console, universal subspace or subphasic defense drone. So we'll take a look at that. Um, two hangar bays, of course, because it is a carrier. Let's scroll down here. Just come with subsystem targeting. Hmm. Okay, so like uh, almost like science carriers coming with the subsystem targeting there. Um, and it comes with a carrier or engineering carrier mastery package. Now look at that. Even the mastery package has plus max hull capacity. So it's, this thing is going to be a massive tank. I, I'd love to see a, like a max hull build on this thing and see what the no, crazy numbers people can get. Um, so yeah, I mean, that would be pretty awesome. Uh, unfortunately, in season 13, uh, aggro tanks builds took quite a bit of a hit as they are, um, you know, the nerf to uh, feedback pulse and a lot of other cases, just uh, reducing the ability of aggro tanks so it's yeah it might not be effective in that kind of a build but you know people might make it work if you have access to like the you know the um the uh attack pattern delta prime trait uh that's still a pretty decent trait so maybe you can make it work but um yeah this thing could probably make a pretty sick tank though all right so let's check out the console the trait and the pets so the console sub subphasic defense drone so the Vorgon developed a unique drone in an attempt to duplicate the effects of the Toxutat. Hmm. Powerful, powerful device. They, yes, yes, the Toxutat. We all know what that is. Um, the drone is equipped with a phasic inhibitor, which will absorb directed energy, inverting the flow of, in such a way to debilitate attackers' weapons. To add to its utility, the Vorgon also offered these drones with defensive enhancements to fortify the regen fortify and regenerate the shields of the ship that launches them. So it's kind of like a defensive drone that will help you out. So it provides a passive shield boost to sh sub uh, shield subsystem power and projectile damage. Okay. And the console may be equipped on any Vorgon ship. So I'm kind of curious to see what the duration and cooldown is on this. Uh, I'm Hopefully you'll be able to have this little helper drone out indefinitely, but, uh, Missing some stats on this. I'm not sure does it help like heal 
your shields? It says also fortify the shields. Does that mean it may provide a shield hardness buff? So we'll have to see how this thing actually works once uh, we get our hands on the ship in, uh, in just under a month. Um, so the trait F is called restorative support. After reaching level five in your Vorgon Rin code on carrier, you will unlock the restorative starship, uh, restorative support starship trait. When this trait is slotted, using hull healing abilities will create a support probe at the target's location or self. The probe will constantly restore a small amount of hull to the target. Wow, so you can just buy these two, the trait and the console, you've already got two little drones flying around. And uh, of course, it's a carrier, so you can have carrier pets. I guess these are people having fun with this, making like a kind of a mini, um, like a pet based build, just having all kinds of pets going around, drones and uh, carrier pets. That could be fun. But um, so we'll have to see how effective that is. I mean, has potential as a defensive ability. I mean, certainly fits the theme of this ship. If you want to turn into a massive tank, having a drone out there that will heal your hull um, and, you know, heal your hull on top of your own hull healing abilities kind of just uh, fits along with the theme of the ship. So that's pretty cool. And let's check out the pets. Now, this is kind of strange. Um, I'm a little bit shocked that the pets that it comes with it are frigate pets. I have to admit, I was actually kind of expecting and almost hoping that it would have came with fighters and then the 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 Xyphius escort from last year, if you have that ship unlocked, then that would have been the hangar, the frigate pet. That would have been really cool to have a bunch of uh, Xyphius heavy escorts floating around uh, as your frigate pets. But uh, unfortunately, that's not what they did. This is actually, they actually give the ship, uh, the base pet is actually a frigate. So it's called the... Vorgon and and Chentis and Centis and Chentis and Kentis <laughs> and Chentis frigate. We'll go with that. Um, and uh, of course, you got your three different uh, variants of there. You got the base model. You've got the Dilithium Store one, which is you know ra uh, very rare quality, and then you've got the ultra rare quality, which is the uh, elite version that you get from the fleet store. Um, let's just take a look at the elite version here. It's got two Tetrion beams, a Tetrion dual beam bank, an aft beam array, and a chronoton mine launcher, a mine dispersal pattern alpha, and suppression barrage. Hmm, I have to admit, I don't have a lot of confidence in the pet AI using mines wisely. So I have the feeling this pet might not perform as well as some of the other pets out there just because of getting a mine instead of a torpedo. So that is a little bit unfortunate. Um, I'm not a huge fan of mines just in any case, but uh, I don't see a pet's, pet AI using those mines effectively. So yeah, a little bit disappointed in these pets. I, I was really hoping for the, the Vorgon Xyphius Heavy Escort to be the, pet, the frigate pet, so... Yeah, a little bit of a disappointment there in my mind. Um, oh, and they gave the Admiralty ship stats. Cool. So the Admiralty ship stats are uh, 74 engineering, 26 science, 26 tactical, and the special ability of 8 science and tactical per engineering ship. Not bad. I love the special abilities on the Admiralty cards that give you bonus um, stats. Just bonus stats all around. They... Helps a lot when you're trying to meet those high requirement missions and uh, or if you just want to increase your crit chance on another mission and stack up those stats. So that is that is a really nice Admiralty card. All right, so we'll go ahead and close that out. So that is the stats. So overall, I think it's it's going to be an interesting ship. I, there are a few things that are a little bit um, holding it back a little bit, I think. The bridge officer seating is a little bit inflexible. The pets with the mines instead of torpedoes might bring it down a little bit, but uh, man, that hull strength! Holy crap! And the the two the console and the trade sound interesting. Being able to have extra drones floating around that could be pretty awesome, or at least uh, fun in a gimmicky build. I could really see this being an awesome tank build, though. Really tanky carrier with just a massive hull strength. So. So cool. So, I mean, yeah, looking forward to getting my hands on this ship, flying around, test it out. I will, of course, do a video on that when it does, uh, you know, in about a month from now, when we do get our hands on this ship, I will definitely do a video on it. So, so look forward to that. 
And uh, I will, of course, be doing another video, probably coming up here pretty shortly. Um, I do want to check out, you know, the new uh, the new little mini game, the new biathlon mini game. I believe it involves both using your floater and uh, the um, the surfboards. Uh, what are they called? Power boards. Okay, so yeah, the power boards, hoverboards, surfboards, whatever you want to call them. Um, I believe it involves both. So I guess at some point you must have to get off your surfboard and then use your floater and finish the race or something. Sounds kind of interesting. But that's the new event. So I'll definitely be checking that out and then, um, you know, take a look at the cosmetics. Uh, I'll also take a look at the new um, ground kit module as well. Um, so yeah, so look forward to all those videos coming up. I'll, I'll open up with a new video this weekend, probably coming up and uh, go through some of that, some of the new goodies that are available. Now, one thing I did want to mention before I close out the video here is that along with this event, we actually got a patch and there were actually two really interesting things in the patch notes. Well, three, <laughs> three interesting things. Now, um, there was a lot of just little minor bug fixes and improvements to quests, you know, good stuff to see. I'm glad they are still refining and going through and, and patching up a lot of these content uh, issues. But three things here in this patch caught my mind. Now, first thing, as you may have noticed, is that they added a new hairstyle, huh? So that is a, obviously the most important thing in the patch, right? And this is the hairstyle right here. I put it on my Romulan character here. It looks pretty crazy. It is actually a, what do they call it? A shaved and curly? Yeah, shaved and curly. So, yep. That pretty well describes it, I think. So you got the shaved side over here and the curly side over here. So that is the new hairstyle. Not sure if I'm liking it on the Romulan, but uh, it does look pretty cool. The um, Quite a bit of detail on the curly side of the hair there. They actually got quite a bit of modeling going on there. So, cool. New hairstyle. So go check it out. See if, it, see if you like it. It's totally free. I'll just go to any one of the tailors and you are all set. Um, now, the other things that caught my eye. Now, one thing is... The first thing is they added this new feature to uh, protect items. This one is like out of left field. I, I didn't even know this was a concern or anything. I haven't heard anyone talking about this on Reddit or anything else. But basically what this feature will do is it will allow you to protect, to flag an item in your inventory as protected. And then once you do that, you won't be able to, you know, it'll prevent you from accidentally selling it, discarding it, trading it or even putting it in the guild bank or mailing it, it says. So um, it says to activate this feature, you have to open your inventory, then you right click on an item and say, change protected status to on. So let's say I've got my gambling device here, right? Maybe I don't want it to throw this away. Because I don't know if I want to test it on that. Uh, maybe I should test it on something not, something that I can like reclaim. Like, yeah, like how about this? Say I don't want to accidentally delete one of my uh, consoles here, my Proto Matter field projector. So, yep, so you right click on it and there's a new option, change protected status to on. So there you go, it says uh, Proto Matter, uh, yep, Proto Matter field projector protect status is now on. So if I mouse over it, does it, uh, protection is on. Yeah, it's even adds it to the, the tool tip there, cool. All right, so here comes the, the test. I'm now going to try to destroy this. That's, uh, I guess you can't do it that way. Oh, so if you do it, it doesn't even give you the destroy option anymore. Interesting, so yeah. You can't uh, discard it. I wonder if I can um, try to, I don't know if I could have recycled that anyway. I don't think that ever showed up on the list. Yeah. But uh, there you go, guys, that is, kind of a cool feature i guess um i can't see myself using it that much i don't know that i've ever like accidentally deleted something but you know maybe maybe it'd be good to put on like the um gambling gambling device i know some people out there i'm sure who have um <laughs> you know who are ec rich and have lots of lockbox ships and things probably very useful for them it'd be nice to not accidentally delete or trade away a lockbox item so yeah Nice little feature, I have to say. A little bit unexpected, but, you know, I'll take it. It's good. And one other thing in this patch, so last thing here, is the they finally made some of those long-awaited improvements to the PvEQ. 
user interface. So they redid this user interface back in season 13 and had a lot of issues. It was hard to filter to find the um, queue you were looking for. It was hard, you couldn't really queue up for a two, uh, two different difficulties of the same queue at the same time. It was very difficult to do that. Um, so, but it looks like they finally listened to the feedback here and made some improvements. So let me just quickly read the note here from the patch notes. It says, um, oh, where'd it go? Um, so added a tab for which cues you have selected. I think that's here. So you can say only the cues you have selected. Um, I'll check that out once I actually queue up for something. I believe that will actually filter only what you've que actually queued. Um, it will now uh, it will now always display the selected queue in all tabs, regardless if the queue was joined by a public queue or a private queue. Okay, that's nice for people to do private queues. Um, when closing the queue window or changing tabs, the queue if queues have been selected but not joined, the UI will prompt you. That's kind of nice. Um, but there's some actually other things I noticed here. Was it, was there anything else they mentioned about the queue? Because I, I noticed a few other things that they added. Um, like for example, they added this right here. You can now filter the queue. You know, you can filter the entire list based on difficulty. It used to be, you know, you had to do it like this, and it only showed this one queue, and maybe you want to queue for the elite one here. It was um, difficult to do, but now with this, you could queue, uh, filter the entire list. Oh, and you can filter by, I think this was here before, ground and space. You can do all. So if you do all, you can do like, only show me the elite ones. Oh, only selected skill. That's what this does. So if you select elite and then you check this, it will only show elite queues. Nice. If you uncheck this, it will show you elite queues. Probably these ones that are not here elite probably don't have an elite version, right? Okay, that makes sense. Um, so that's nice, nice new filtering. I kind of prefer that because I'll usually, you know, if I'm going to queue up for an master elite, I'd rather just see the the list <laughs> and then click here, and then these are just the advanced ones, so you could just do it that way. That's actually really nice. So that works well. But a couple other things I noticed here. Um, I'm going to turn this on, off for now, but let's say, for example, you wanted to queue up for a Crystalline Catastrophe and you wanted to queue up for the Normal and the Elite. Now, if you queue up for the Normal, check the box, changes to Elite or uh, Advanced, you can see it actually puts a little circle there showing that you have still the Normal version queued, and then you can check the box there, and it will actually say Join Both. So that's actually really nice makes it a lot easier to join two difficulties of the same queue. Um, and uh, you can go up here to selected. So this, yeah, this was a, this is what I was thinking of, that this tab here will only show you the two you have selected. Nice. So this is a lot of really good improvements here. And the final thing is they said if you close out without actually joining, it will actually prompt you. Yes, it says you have two selected queues, but not joined. Would you like to join? Nice. I'm not going to join those right now, but I have to say that's actually nice. They've been listening to the feedback, um, and it appears to be it's certainly a lot better than it was. A lot of these uh, improvements to the uh, the Q the UI have uh, really brought it back up to you know brought it back up to having all the features that the old one used to have. Plus, it has the nice new layout with you know being able to filter a lot easier here by mark type and all of that. So, all in all, this is. Um, this is actually turning out to be a, a very good UI now going forward. That uh, it, uh, yeah, it's really becoming fully functional again. All right, so that covers pretty much the patch notes as well. So guys, so how do you guys feel? You, you looking forward to the 2017 summer event? I always like the summer events on Risa. You know, it's nice just kind of relax. You just kind of can you know float around the island on your floater and just enjoy the view, enjoy the water. It's very relaxing. It's nice to have during the summertime. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. I mean, of course, after 25 days of running the event, you're going to, you know, you're going to get bored of it. it. You know, it's hard to prevent that. But even still, you know, the ship is really good. So it's still worth the investment of your time. Um, so, yeah, and I definitely recommend for new players, you, you got to get your hands on these ships. You do, there's only, 
um, you know, Cryptic only gives away about usually three three event ships per year, right? You get the summer event, the winter event, and then usually the anniversary event. Those three events will have the, a tier six ship. So you got to take advantage of it when you can. And uh, it really helps out, for, especially even even just do it just for the Admiralty card. I mean, if you look at um, uh, my roster, I mean, we've from all the previous events here, I've got the Xyphius, you know, I've got the Nandy. All of these ships are really, really good Admiralty cards from all the events. And you can actually, just by participating in the events, you can start building up a really good library of uh, Admiralty cards just from event ships. Um, the, these are really great. I use a lot of these... Uh, for you know the very difficult missions like the you know the um, the actual tour of duty missions or really high requirement missions, so yeah, just start now. Start building up your library of admiralty cards, and um, you know for any new players, you know if you don't have a tier six ship yet, these event ships are usually really good ships. There's you know no reason not to pick them up. Um, so there it is, guys. That's it. The uh, 2017 summer event. Looking forward to it. It should be fun. And uh, yeah, I'll be coming back with some more videos here shortly and uh, checking out the rest of the festivities. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.